That's Gilgamesh Begins from Coleridge Collective, which you, you can find on, on YouTube and other there's there's several versions of Gilgamesh that they've done and other ones you can find there as well. Oh, hang on, it's gonna go yeah, it's gonna start up again. This is one of the things we've discovered about uh Oh, sometimes it's you might just as well go with it. So that the YouTube system has gone on to the flood, which is also from Cartwheels Collective. Uh, I'll play I'll play that later on. Uh, it's quite interesting. I think I think radio has got to adjust to all these things. The fact that there are seven or eight different streaming systems that we could sort of dip into because we think there's something there that we want and then it's got a mind of its own and meanwhile I think the audience has probably gone because they might prefer that. There may be some people who've decided well this Phonic FM 106.8 that could be quite interesting. I mean um, probably, oh, well I can tell you actually JD, I don't think JD's coming. It's a strange time of year. We're not really back to normal. I don't think JD will be here at 10 o'clock, but I think Chris will be here. He, he's normally here about half past 10, but because I think probably JD's not coming, Chris may get in a bit a bit earlier or try to. Anyway, um, no, I'll play, the, I'll play the flood later. I'll carry on with what I was going to talk about, which is um, a story I saw in The Guardian. It's, it's available lots of other places, and it's about streaming, streaming music is is um in equivalent albums which what's that a thousand streamed tracks deemed to be equivalent to one real world album anyway you look at this and um the the streaming income is 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 amazing now and apparently it's all very viable and it's it's pretty much different to where things were say 10 years ago when I, th I think Phonics started sort of 10 years ago, that was last year, but I think probably, well, I'll check with Chris, but I think The Wild Show is about 10 years old, will be sometime soon. And during that time, quite clearly, the, um, the CD situation has more or less gone away and the streaming situation has, has, has taken over. And radio must be affected by this in some, some sort of way, which we'll come back to. And also, I think education or uh, content distribution in the form of academic journals or knowledge, uh, various various things like that, which we'll come on to later. And I think really that my my solution to how to describe that usually has been to to ask the storyteller, uh, because he's also the stand-up philosopher, and you can just sort of explain. A situation in which something needs to be said and more or less what the issues are and he will come up with a, a dramatic version of it usually anyway um, one of the things which got to adjust to all this streaming business is the record store and in Exeter we've, we've got one shop in on 4th Street which has more or less always been mostly vinyl which is what the chart shows as growing um, and then HMV, which has, has got a stock of current CDs, uh, but also it seems to be putting more and more space to vinyl as well. And they've started to do live performance. So um, Black Monsoon was there, which, which I recorded. The, that was, and when I, when I was there, uh, they said that the Simitons are going to be there, possibly in January. Uh, so. That is interesting. I think what's happening is that, that they need to be more kind of um, analog or authentic or some sort of offer something that streaming doesn't offer. Um, so I notice a lot, a lot of the a lot of the vinyl seems to be classic tracks from long ago. I'm not quite sure what that's about, um, but I'm I'm going to try and pay more attention to HMV because, uh, well, partly I'm I'm an old fashioned CD. Uh, person anyway um, and it's just interesting how that how that's getting along uh, but also here's um here's a, a simitans track though they not only may be in hmv during january but they're going to be doing a, a benefit for phonic on the 2nd 
I think I've got that date right. Hang on just a moment. Uh, yes, yeah, 2nd of February uh, here, at, here at the Phoenix. And uh, this, this song is called Perhaps, Perhaps, Perhaps. Marvin, Marvin Gaye. Uh, that's what, an, an sort of alternate version of You're the Man from the CD. Uh, I thought it was a very strong album uh, CD last year, and uh, this year it's it's uh, reduced in price. They've got about six copies, I think, at HMV. Uh, so the CD, the CD is still there. It's still, still, still around. Uh, when when Chris is here, around about ten something or another. Maybe up past ten. Uh, he does the whole show from his phone, and I'm so, I'm sort of in the background with CDs just in case something goes wrong. But it, it very rarely does nowadays. When we started the show, uh, well, at least five years ago, um, the studio wasn't wasn't really set up for streaming devices. It was more a CD sort of studio. But now I think there's about three. There's two cables and a Bluetooth option. That's apart from the computer that has some um, quite good bandwidth. I say that I'm about to test it. Should be all right. I think it's. I think it's all going to work. Um, this is the flood which YouTube came up with after the previous time I played Cartwheels Collective. Uh, so if you if you want to find this again, look for Cartwheels Collective on on YouTube, and find 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 it find it there. <laughs> To do. Uh, Dionne Warwick and the CD She's Back is still in HMV. I think there's only one copy. It's been there a long time. The price this year is still the same as last year, but there is uh, another CD hidden away in there uh, called Now, which is reworkings of classic tracks and the the she's back has got some some old tracks as well but a lot of new new tracks and uh that's just an example of what what seems to go on with with um the c the compact disc some of them are, are now quite cheap quite reasonable and then there's a there's a few which the the price is there for dedicated fans or something which i think is a mistake because i i think if it was all reasonably priced like the the christmas one the Dion warwick christmas one was was okay sort of price and uh, that seemed that seemed to go um so i think i think i don't and what am i saying go and go and have a look anyway if you can find the one the one copy of she's back and now coupled together at an expensive price for one i'm, go I'm gonna go on like this um H hmv is uh, arguably an endangered uh, sort of uh, phenomenon and I think it contributes something even in the age of streaming that uh, we seem to be in uh, anyway now I'm going to play an advert for a MOOC course uh, when when JD is back which I think will be next week um, we talk about the MOOC and I'm going to go to Lancaster for um, a conference in March about uh, the platform university i think they're going to be quite negative or critical at least about the platform university because the online uh, streaming world is regarded as commercial it's not really coming from a an academic base um but why why that is is another question i think but that's how that's how it all seems to be looked at um but that's at the the story institute which is in the in the town of Lancaster, it's in the in the city centre sort of area, so it's a sort of equivalent of the Phoenix, which which this is. Uh, well, um, Philharmonic FM is in the basement of the Phoenix in Exeter, and round the corner from uh, the Story Institute in Lancaster is is the castle, which is a much more substantial castle than than we have in in Exeter at this time. Uh, it's still got very strong walls. And uh, it was a prison. It's it's no longer a prison, I don't think. I think it's more a, a visitor place. Um, but I'm I'm interested in the idea of a fortress university as well. Peter Horrocks, who was vice chancellor of the Open University, 
um, he, he more or less had to resign, I think, because he was putting far too much money into FutureLearn and closing down buildings, re regional support centres, which is all quite arguable, but I, I think there possibly was a, was a case for shifting priorities away from buildings. When, when JD's back, and may, maybe with Chris to some, some extent, we'll, we'll go on a bit about student accommodation and why there's so much of it still being built in Exeter especially, or maybe everywhere, I don't know. There's a lot in Lancaster as well. Um, but it just does seem odd that if the online world is, is reaching an education, which it might be, um, why the building is still going on when Exeter can support maybe two record shops. Not more than that, doesn't seem. And maybe not that many. We don't know how that's going to go. Anyway, all I'm all I'm going all I'm suggesting is we look at um, we look at the music scene and the the university scene or the education scene as if there's some sort of connection. What the what the dates are on any of this, we don't we don't know. But we didn't know during the last ten years looking at the music scene and um, the stats on streaming seem now. Anyway, that we've been, been into all this. This is this is um, on. You can find this on YouTube. Lancaster Castle and Northern English History: The View from the Stronghold. It's a it's an advert, but I think it's worth worth considering. Maybe we could do do something similar on on Exeter Exeter Castle which is now for weddings and uh, conferences and residential, uh, but has has got history. So uh, maybe we could fit, fit something in with that. But what I'd like to do is think about the Fortress University because um, Lancaster Castle's also been used for uh, conferences, lectures, uh, about the, the history of uh, free speech, the witch trials, uh, the Quakers, all kinds of I I events there, and uh, I, c I can't I can't locate it at the moment, but I'll, I'll find that on a future show. Uh, play at least a clip. I think it's about an hour, but they've they've used the castle as a as a as a backdrop for talks and performances, uh, recreating trials, all kinds of things. Very 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 interesting use of the the, the city, or let's say outside of the campus. And so if you, if you sort of go back to what Peter Horrocks was going on about, the idea of the Fortress University is something that can be uh, freed up a bit by moving it online, make it more open. Um, I think maybe you can imagine a Fortress University at some point in the future. And I've, I've been thinking about that uh, when visiting Kendall uh, because Kendall has got a castle that's definitely a ruin. Maybe we've got ruined castles in the southwest somewhere. Could do it. Um, this, this is where I want to talk to the storyteller uh, when I eventually locate him. Uh, I'm sure he's. Last year, one of the, one of these times I came in early to to cover, he actually turned up. This was in the summer when the festivals are going on, and I'm not quite sure where he is. Uh, but anyway. Uh, the Fortress University, the Platform University, and what happens at some point in the future, uh, as as fiction, obviously it's a sort of science fiction, uh, but using castles, ruined castles, as as a backdrop. Uh, if anybody's got any ideas, to get to to to, to get in touch, I'm Will Seven Eight Nine GB on Twitter, or the Wild Show, which is going to start quite soon. Uh, has got a, a Facebook page or WENOTNO the, the We Don't Know show which is often on a Wednesday more or less every other Wednesday um, that, that's on Twitter as well uh, what was I going yeah I think going back to going back to Widsuf and Dior this is the drama hour at the moment storytelling and this this is a work in progress. It just comes out as Witsuf and Dior. Again, it's suggested by YouTube. Uh, my movie is called. 
I think that's what it was done in. They haven't changed the title. But I'll try try playing this and see see what see what this one's about. So Shamash accepted the sacrifice of his tears. That's Tony Braxton. Uh, Sex and Cigarettes CD. Ridiculously cheap. But there's only one left at HMV. Uh, we'll say more about uh, Simitons, may- maybe during the Wild Show, s- starting at 10 o'clock. Uh, they should be they should be at HMV some, sometime in January, I, we, we think. But we don't, we don't know for sure. Uh, this, this has been the drama hour, storytelling, maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll carry on with the story of how the show develops, I suppose, and whether we can get a fortress university ruins sci-fi drama worked out sometime during the year uh, this is Mo- Molly Town dub uh, just just stone <laughs> 